Okay, so um, we are um, on case one here. Does anyone want to volunteer to tell me what you guys think about this case? A 65-year-old man with a large ulcerated subungual thumb nodule, and this is an amputation specimen. Let me maximize it here. So here's a view number one. I think you like this. Okay. So we're looking at an amputation specimen, and you see a large tumor extending very, very deep throughout the tumor. And if you zoom in closely, it looks like it's forming nests. Oh, good, yes. Lots of mitosis throughout. Uh huh, and there's one right there, actually. Good. So I was looking for any epidermal involvement. Things like an overlying melanoma site, and wasn't able to find any. Here, and before I move to the next one, just to show this is articular cartilage from the phalanx bone, and then this is the bone. You can see the tumor is is coming from up here. We like you said, the epidermis is kind of a, ulcerated and gone extensively. I think this was under the nail actually, and it's grown way down and penetrated all the way through. This is where cortex of bone used to be. I know in derm you guys don't see uh, bone very often. But uh, that's where the bone used to be, and this is tumor growing into it. And you're right that most of it does not have epidermal involvement. If I look around very carefully, I found some areas where I wonder about it, but I think that's all junk and debris. Let's look at the next slide. Here's another one, and I love this view because look at those swoon. Oh, how can you, if you don't like that, I can't help you. I mean, man, Pacinian delight. It's all the Pacinian corpuscles you could ever want. Is like my favorite normal structure microscopically. Um, okay, but anyway, sorry. Back to the back to the case at hand. So here's tumor, and you're right. This is a problem that happens sometimes that the epidermis gets effaced or ulcerated, and we can't uh, evaluate whether there's any in situ there or not. So what do you think the most likely that this is, or what's your differential, and what would you do to to solve it? So I'd be concerned for melanoma with you know atypical. Lots of mitoses, these nest-like structures. Good. So I'd definitely be interested in drawing some melanoma markers at it. Yeah, very good. And let's see, I think I've got another another slide. I can't remember. I think there was one area where there is very subtle in situ, just a few cells, but most of the in situ is gone. But this is melanoma, you're correct. And um, uh, melanoma, so, oh yeah, here. It's a very, very rare tiny area of in situ. So this happens sometimes where we get a nodule, a big rapidly growing nodule melanoma that ulcerates the surface of the skin and obliterates any pre-existing in situ that was there. And that always makes us worry, could it be a metastasis? So then you have to kind of put the clinical scenario in, in mind. If it's a single lesion, no history, you know, uh, different doctors have different views about how far you should go in working those patients up. Here on the, on the thumb, I mean, almost certainly this is going to be a, a primary melanoma. And in this case, it was. And um, so, yes, melanoma markers were positive. SOX 10 and Mark 1 were positive here. And so it's a really dramatic example because we don't often see uh, amputations for melanoma. Um, sometimes when they're fungating like this, it has to be done. Uh, one of the potential downsides from what um, uh, melanoma surgeons that I've known have told me is that potentially these tumors, even though you clear the whole tumor, they can pop up with satellite lesions at the amputation stump, which can become uh, fungated and ulcerated and, and problematic. So in a case like this, it probably doesn't matter because you've already got a fungating ulcerated tumor. So in any case, we don't see that very often. Uh, but subungual melanoma, as you guys know, is, a, is, is rare, but it's certainly out there and is a real issue and we need to be aware of it. And when I see melanomas in darkly pigmented patients, dark, dark skin types, it's usually a subungual or other acral melanoma. Um, only rarely have I seen melanoma in dark skin patients uh, that are not acral. Um, and look, we've got also, here's a nerve, and we've got perineural invasion by the melanoma, and we've got deep involvement into the bone even, and, oh, there actually is another normal structure I was going to show you here. Look at that, once it comes into focus. Does anyone know what that is? This is a normal glomus apparatus, a canal of Suke Hoyer. Um, I'm sure I'm butchering the, the French name, but in any case, that is a little arterial venous anastomosis um, from which uh, uh, glomus tumors are recapitulating those cells, and you see them most often in the, in the digits. So um, an acral melanoma with bone invasion. Um, and I like that you picked up on the nesting. Um, sometimes it's hard to see because you'll get like sheet-like areas, but even here you can kind of appreciate that there's small nests, 
with kind of grayish, uh, grayish to pinkish kind of or pale cytoplasm. And to me, nesting with that kind of cytoplasm, it, and, and especially if you get big, huge nucleoli like we see here, that right away rings the melanoma bell. Uh, but you could also consider other things. Poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma could potentially look like this. Other poorly differentiated carcinomas like metastasis, although metastasis to the, the hands and feet is rare. I've seen rare things that have done that, but pretty rare. Um, and then you could also think of things like epithelial angiosarcoma, other stuff. So those could be if you're here, I would just do melanoma stains um, to prove it if I couldn't find the in situ. And then I'd be done and I'd sign it out. Um, and uh, if the melanoma stains were negative, then I might expand into, you know, ERG or CD31 for angiosarcoma, uh, high molecular weight keratin or, or P40 for um, squamous cell carcinoma and, and beyond, depending on the situation. But a good example um, of the melanoma um, uh, pattern there in cytology, and again, the nesting, good pickup on the nests, even down here in the bone. The melanocytes like to make nests. For some reason, they just like to grow in that nested kind of clumped pattern, and that can be a really huge clue for us to make the diagnosis. So, well done. Any questions? Okay, we'll move on to the next uh, case.